2010 Kia Sedona V6, 3.8 liter apparently, got 10 millimeter bolts here. Take those off to get this beautiful cover off. Left to loosen, right to tighten for all bolts. Three spark plugs in the front here, very easy to get to, can do that in just a few minutes, but in the back, unfortunately, they're under the intake, upper intake plenum. We'll need to be moving that to the side so we can get to the plugs. So they do have a safety on here. I think it might be best to stick a little screwdriver in here. And give it a little pry. Prize that back. We can squeeze the gray terminal. As the theory. And pull it off. <laughs> See if any of them will work according to the theory. Hmm, <sighs> not yet. My best advice is we're going to push down on this because that is where it releases. Push down on it and then use a screwdriver over here to maybe uh, encourage it, so to speak, to go to the left. There we go. Kind of dig in there and get that terminal right there. That terminal needs to go up right there. Then now three 10 millimeter bolts and give them a little twist and they should just pull out. These are ignition coils on tape, top of each spark plug. All right, got all the 10 millimeter bolts loose. Let's give these a twist and pull them out. It's your coil. Computer fires each one of these individually as needed in the firing order and get to our three spark plugs here's my setup with the, my deep probably 5 8 spark plug socket and some extensions and a wrench and then uh, just left to loosen really all there is to it and we'll take this out there's different types of spark plug sockets and uh, I mean if you have one of these it'll work but they have little pieces of rubber inside and they actually grip onto the spark plug so when you pull the socket out Theoretically, the spark plug will come with it. Theoretically. Boom, like that. Looks fairly normal. It's a platinum tip spark plug. There is uh, typically no need and they do not recommend gapping. Just platinum tipped spark plugs that'll come pre-gapped. Just want to make sure that someone hasn't dropped your new one and uh, banged it up. So if it looks good, then uh, you just put it in. So our box of spark plugs does give us some directions here. If it's tapered, you tighten it to 1 16th after it touches. If you feel it getting a little snug, if it has a gasket like ours does, then it's a half to two thirds of a turn. There's the instructions about not changing the gap, and I'm not sure what that picture is, but yeah. Some of the simple instructions on the box. So we got our spark plug on there. It looks like uh, no one's dropped it. We can go ahead and put that in. Start uh, all nuts and bolts and spark plugs, etc. Things that are threaded, start them by hand. <clears throat> so we've pretty much hit bottom, so that's where we're going to turn it uh, one half to two thirds of a turn to install this spark plug. So, there's a half, just over a half. 
Mm. There we go. The spark plug is installed. And uh, so it's identical for each one of those in the front. So let's move on to tackling the intake manifold. Then we should uh, just go ahead and plug this back in where we're done. Make a little click and push this blue tang back in. Securing your coil connectors. Basically, go in here and taking out the 10 millimeter bolts that are holding this in place. Disconnected the injectors, trying to give me some more slack. This white piece slides up, then you can push the black tab and release it in a similar fashion to the coils. Get this off here, disconnect this from here. And it looks like Looks like this black pipe is actually on top of the bolts we want to get to for this. Unfortunately. So that's where I'm at right this second. Here's the pipe. It had two 10 millimeter bolts holding it into place. Squeeze the clamp and get that up. So that's going to give us access to the bolts, 10 millimeter bolts for the intake. So that's where we're still going. I might just go ahead and zip off the 10 millimeter nuts and bolts for the intake up here and here. And there's a nut down here. Just go along the bottom here. A nut over there. And just to kind of see where we're at for freedom. But I bet there's going to be an engine mount or a, a bracket on the back side of this going down to the cylinder head or engine. So I already know there's a, it's probably a power strain hose. And bracket back there, it might give us problems. So, I'm gonna take these out and we're just gonna see if we have any give at all. All right, so uh, there's two 10 millimeter bolts and they are going the top up here and hold the power string bracket down. It's kinda nice to get that out of the way, gives you some space to reach back here for that 14 millimeter bolt right there. And you can see my simple three, it's ratchet and 14 millimeter socket and got to it back there and yeah, just reaching right around here took this 10 millimeter bolt out of this bracket right there it gives me more space to although that bracket right there was mounted you can see the hole I think where the bolt went through this bracket so that's back there we got that off and uh, I think I mentioned the 12 millimeter bolt over here. And now it does lift up. <clears throat> I think we're going to want to pop this out. I was thinking about tilting it, but I think there's not enough clearance to actually just tilt it. So I'll probably pull this wiring harness off and disconnect this uh, throttle control motor right here. The wiring connection here. And uh, that might help. And uh, this uh, brake booster hose as well. Take the clamp, slide it back, and also take the hose off. And disconnect a couple of these wiring thingies here. And uh, pull these free. And we might be able to get this baby out. So we took the clamp off and slid it down here. Took the hose off here. 10 millimeter bolt here to hold this in place. Try to take this clamp off and take it off here. But it wasn't really working, so... Went to somewhere else. Lay that off to the side. Got this electrical connector off. Got the hose off. This piece here was right down here. Took that off. Not sure I needed to. Here's just a couple of the wiring pieces I took off. Oh yeah, the connector right there. <clears throat> and there's a hose back here. Might have to take that off too. I'm not exactly sure. It's got a clamp back there. You can get back there with maybe with a small needle nose or small clamp and get back there. You'll find out. I think because I think it goes down to the rear valve cover. <sighs> I think I took this off here. I don't know if I showed that. So it was almost all off. I think that hose might be the last thing. <clears throat> I 
might take off these two 10 millimeter bolts so that I get some freedom here to pull this back maybe away from uh, the upper plenum otherwise we'll put, take this clamp off the back and uh, take this hose off and hopefully lift this thing out still kind of a fight with these things here and I guess actually we could just disconnect all these items down here still and give us more movability with this or find a way to disconnect this from whatever but you can see I wiggled it out I was just gonna push these down underneath this once I lifted this up there's one coolant hose still attached down there that's why I didn't pull it all the way out and won't be too bad to get to if it just if this is sitting back in a normal spot it'll be pretty easy to get to but we're just getting to the coils and I think this is gonna do it for us that back one might be a small issue but uh, if it is uh, we'll see about moving this farther or taking that coolant hose off you may move this bracket too might have let's probably might have two 12 millimeter bolts we might just leave it alone but there we go, we got the upper intake plenum off. We'll put a little rag over the top of these so nothing falls in. And same procedure in the back for a spark plug replacement. So this bracket did have two 12 millimeter bolts. I took out the one that was closest to me, closest to the camera, then loosened the one in the back. And it just kind of drops down, pivoted down, give me the extra space to move it over just a little bit. And we have clear access to this one here and it'll pull out. So you can see we didn't have to disconnect anything uh, from the coils. So just gonna lay them off to the side a little bit and uh, do your spark plugs. I think this is everything you need to know to do your spark plugs on your 2010 Kia. Good luck to you. There's a hole for the uh, bracket in the back. There's the bracket. I would not bolt this down until you get that bolt started or tightened up. Make sure you have all the bolts for the brackets in the back. Well, just two of them really started before you tighten down the uh, upper intake plenum. It'll help with installation. So they seem like pretty generous. That's a pretty generous hole on there. One note, we're putting it, putting it back together. There are little black inserts. These are actually inserts that do come out because this one uh, fell out on me. So be aware of that when you're taking it apart or putting it back together.